Hi everyone, it's Pete here. Now if you've watched my channel before, you might know I'm a big fan of these Armour 3S trucks. They are really reliable, but the other day my big rock started to sound like this. Now I was fairly sure this was going to be the ring gear on the differential and the input gear that meshes with it. These are really strong, but they do wear out eventually. That noise could also be a worn out spur gear, so I'll check that as well. First thing to do is to take out the centre drive shaft, which is spring loaded. The bearing in the middle might make this a little bit awkward. So you take it out from the gearbox end first and then the front. Next you need to take out this screw underneath. That then releases the red plastic block in the middle there so you can slide it towards you. To get the motor and spur gear assembly out you need to lift up this tab and lever it across. Now this can be a bit difficult if it's jammed up with grip but it should go eventually. You need to unplug the wire so you can get the power module out. My big rock here has got non-standard electronics so it's got another little wire here in the motor which the standard one didn't. Like I was saying I'm just going to check the spur gear while I've got this apart. The spur gear looks fine, I'm just going to check the mesh with the pinion. That also seems fine. One of the bearings seems a bit rough, so I'm going to change that while I'm here. So I'll just get this put back together and have a look at those other gears. So to get the differential out, we need to take this bit off, which is also the shock tower. Now you don't actually need to detach the shocks, but you do need to take out these two bumper screws. The main screws we need to get out are underneath, and mine are also full of mud, so I need to remove that as well. Like I was saying, you should be able to get the diff out of here without detaching the shocks. You just need to pull apart the telescopic drive shafts. So this is pretty obviously the cause of the problem. This isn't unexpected. I've been hammering this truck to death for a couple of years and they do wear out eventually. Because the crunching sound happened under acceleration, it was almost bound to be the rear one, but it'd be worth checking the front one as well. There's a couple of screws to get this casing apart. It's not a bad idea to take a photo of which way up this is and which way the gear goes into it so you can get it back the right way later. You need to get the drive shafts off and the easiest way is to put a long 2mm hex down through the middle. You can jam another screwdriver in there to stop the drive shaft spinning while you're trying to undo it. You should feel the hex driver catch onto the screw at the bottom. Once that's undone you should be able to pull off the shaft. Ooh so it's just the same again on the other side. Now the casing will come apart and we can get the gears out. You can see this input gear is really worn out too. So it's safe to say these both need replacing. These bearings look a bit rusty but they run okay so I'm going to reuse them. There's also a little shim on this side. The diff internal gears are almost certainly fine so I want to reuse those as well. Yeah they look good as new. I've got my new diff case set here. It's just a matter of putting the gears from the old one into the new one. You can't go too far wrong here. I think I had 30,000 CST oil in previously but I could only find this 20,000 so I'm going to use this. Now really you could reuse the lid because that's not damaged but I'm going to replace it just for the sake of it. There's a rubber gasket here that I'm going to reuse. That seems to be all running smoothly. Now the bearings sometimes need a bit of persuading to go on. I wasn't able to push this on with my finger so I'm using the old wrench and hammer method. I'm trying to do this so the wrench is on the inner ring of the bearing so it doesn't get broken. That's got that on. The one on the other side went on very easily for some reason. I'm going to try and reuse the bearings on this input gear which might be easier said than done. That's one of them off but I've never been able to get the second bearing off one of these no matter how hard I've tried. Off camera the bearing broke so I still haven't managed to get one of these off successfully. Luckily I've got a spare one I can use. The part number of this input gear has changed over the years but this is the one they're selling currently. Apart from the fact the old one's really worn out you can see it is slightly different to the new one but these new ones do fit. I'm using a bit of GT85 to help the bearings go on. I'm not going to be able to get this on just using my finger so it's going to be the trusty wrench and hammer again. 
the second one went on much easier. Just cleaning the old grease and plastic shavings out of the casing. Just need a bit of grease on the gears before I put this all back together. idea to put some thread lock in these to stop the drive shaft screws coming loose. Now while I was putting this back in I suddenly remembered it would be a good idea to clean out the old grease and plastic shavings from the diff case. Now if these channels are clogged it can make it difficult to get the power module back in so I'm put a bit of oil in. That looks good so a quick bench test. Test outside to make sure it's running okay. Now that all looks okay, but you may notice that I forgot to put those bumper screws back in, so I'll just sort that out. And now it's ready for some more blasting. It's worth saying that mine was having the problem when it was accelerating, so it was going to be the back gears that were the problem. If yours has a problem with it braking, then it might be the front gears that need looking at. It's probably worth looking at those front gears anyway. If you found this video helpful, then please press like and maybe leave me a comment. If you made it this far, thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time.